So we're here live from Reggae Rise Up in St. Petersburg, Florida. How's everybody feeling out there? You doing good? Come on. We're sitting down with Eddie, founder of Sugar Shack, and Drew from Satsang. Let's go. Come on, let's give it up for Drew. Just had an amazing session. How you feeling, man? I feel really good. This is the end of the first week of tour. We're doing three sets today. That was two of three. I, I feel good, man. feel healthy. feel strong. You feeling chilly? You chilly out here? It's I a am. cold, little chilly Florida I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. If you see me shaking or looking weird, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm... I'm not underfed. I'm not <laughs> detoxing. I'm just You're moved. Cold. You're just moved I'm from just the moved. amazing yeah. night you're having. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Well, thank you for rocking with us. Dude, thank you guys so much. Yeah, it's been an amazing weekend. Way to just wrap it up, put a bow on the weekend for us, man. It's really special. And uh, it's my understanding that you're, you're good friends of Sugar Shack. You guys go way back. And so I'd love to just kick it off and hear about how you both met and how you were introduced to Sugar Shack. Dude, Eddie was one of our, I feel like, one of our earliest supporters um, Ooh. Ooh. And, and reached out really early about wanting to do one with us before I felt like anyone even really knew who we were. So it, it meant a whole bunch. And, um, and then we made it happen. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Drew, you're one of those guys, no matter what you write, no matter what you do, I, I love it. And you're one of those artists to me, man. Thank and, you, man. I, it really means a lot coming here and doing this with us. And I know you're, we have a big day, you have a busy day. So... Thank you for doing that yeah, today, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's my and, pleasure. And it's overdue to have you back at the shack for a proper, I know. proper session. Yes, we'll bring all the boys. Yes. I'd love to hear more about Satsang. So when did the idea start for you to start that music project? Well, I, start, I, I started playing music when I was like 13, around there. And then, um, yeah, I kind of played and wrote songs through high school, never really performed. Um, but really, I took a trip to Nepal um, 10 years ago, actually, 10 years ago as of the 1st of uh, April. Wow. And I was writing all these things, and then um, I hit this halfway mark on the trip, and I spent all of the first money, real money I had ever made. I took this job and uh, spent all of the money to go on this big trip to Nepal. And at the halfway mark of the trip, I was like sitting at the top of this crazy mountain pass. And I was like, okay, well, now you're on your way home. Like, what are you going to do, bro? You're broke again. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it just hit me like it's music. It's always been music. I always yeah. knew it was what I wanted to do. And um, so I was just writing, 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 writing. And I pretty much came home and got right fucking after it, man. Wow. I mean, I start so playing bargains. So you just how long, how long was that trip for you? Five weeks. Five weeks. And you spent the, that five weeks just kind of like on your own writing. Yeah, I was. Kick, kick I did off. a big giant circle through uh, the Kumba region of the Himalaya. So saw Everest, stood at the foot of Everest, um, but went over these b three big mountain passes. And when I was going over the second one, I was like, damn, dude, the trip's halfway over. Wow. And it all just kind of hit me. And then I came home and just started grinding. And I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. I just, what led you to want to make a trip like that? I don't know. I mean, I've always been really into Eastern philosophy. Um, so I always thought it would be India, but I worked at a gear shop. I was just a dirtbag, you know, it was just like rock climbing and skiing. <laughs> yeah. And that was my life. And... <laughs> Um, Somebody's the, clapping for the yeah. dirtbag comment. They're like, yeah, yeah. dirtbag. And um, well, I worked at this gear shop, and the older guy that worked there, Pete, had been taking people to Nepal for like 20 years. And he's like, well, man, if you have like five grand, you know, you could just come do this crazy trek with me with nobody else. I've always wanted to do this trip, but no one's ever been down to do this long of a Whoa. trip. And uh, I had just acquired $5,000, so instead of getting a car younger than me, <laughs> I fucking went to Nepal. Hell yeah. Changed your life, it sounded yeah. like. like yeah. Best yeah. investment into Ever. your life. Yeah. That's I knew, awesome. Too. I remember my father-in-law said those exact words. He was like, you're not going to get, like, a car maybe younger than you? Or I was like, uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm going to go to Nepal. That's awesome, man. I think that's a really cool, that's a great story, man. And I mean, ever since then, you just got back, you hit the ground running and you were just, you just started grinding and just, all right, I'm going to figure this out. And yep. and then you, what, you released your first project and then it just went from there. Yeah. Um, Carl, who I, who was my roommate in Chicago, my bass player, I convinced him to come to Montana and uh, yeah, we made the story of you on a hundred dollar microphone in my office, in my house. And I had no... I, it's crazy that people listen to those songs. Like, it was the most low-budget, no-idea-what-the-fuck-we-were-doing 
record ever. But, dude, that's what it's about, man. It's about putting something out from the heart and something that's authentic. And I think we're seeing more and more these days. Yes. And, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but you'd probably rather have something that's authentic and real and maybe the sound quality can be shitty at times than to have something fully produced, really clean, professional, and it just be, like, empty. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I listen to a phone recording album from you all fucking day, <laughs> yes, dude. Me too. All day. <laughs> My tour manager's always saying that, dude. Yeah. Do an iPhone album. Yeah, oh, dude. shit. Absolutely. Don't tell anybody. We'll be like, this is the best thing he's ever put out. <laughs> yeah. I made it on my iPhone. Absolutely, dude. Eddie, what's um, what's your favorite piece of content from these guys? Ooh. Favorite piece of con- Sugar Shack content? It can be. Ah, man, your back to X session is amazing. And happened to line up with uh, Richard Wagner being there. Yes, that was a trip. I mean, that was so cool, man. Yeah. That was the magic of the shack where artists can come together on the fly, play together, and make magic. Something that is timeless and will last forever. I, yeah. I just love that. I love his back deck stuff. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, that was a funny day because I remember during that waiting period, you know, my, my old drummer, Ben Teeters, who I love dearly, um, He was smoking heavy that day. (laughs) And then all of a sudden it was time to record. And I remember being like, we're going to one take this. We've been on tour for months. Like we're so tight right now. And we had to do like four or five takes of a couple songs because Ben was just like, it's part of it. It's part of it. It's It's all part of the process. Yeah, it was such a fun night. It was. It was an amazing night. Switching gears a little bit, somebody on on the side stage during your your set walked up to to me and said, "Do you know he's like a jujitsu black belt or something? Like, is this true?" <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Tell us about, about that. this yeah. part of so, your life. Not a black belt yet. I'm um, okay. about to get my brown belt. Um, yeah, man, I love uh, combat sports as much as I love music. It is such cool. a huge part of my life. Um, when I'm home, I'm training nonstop. I've been coaching the past couple years, which has been really fulfilling for me. I love it a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, like, my dream goal would be to do one tour a year and then spend the rest of the year coaching and, and training. Just I really having that balance sick. where you're able to release that artist expression and then shift gears, huh? Yeah. yeah, I love it so, so much. Yeah, I would not be the person I um, I am without jujitsu and MMA. What disciplines that you've learned in jujitsu have helped you as a musician and artist? Mm. Ooh, good one. I, I have this pivotal moment when I was, like, a brand-new white belt my professor had, was on my back and he pulled my gi over my face and I started like freaking out and he said in my ear, stop it, you can breathe. Mm. And then I took this deep breath and was like, oh shit, I can breathe. And that like pivotal moment, which you continue to get different versions of that lesson as you, as you keep doing <laughs> yeah. jujitsu, yeah. that it's just not, you, you approach problems differently and it's such a fickle, weird industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and realizing there's always a way out and 99.999% of the time you can breathe. There's nothing to be panicking about. There's no mm. reason to freak. Stay calm. Solve the puzzle. That's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's Love awesome. It. Love That's that. Great. Yeah. You said you took a fight. I did. Yeah. What is that? Um, so Has it happened? Yeah. It happened January 14th. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. hell yeah. Wow. And I won. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's hell go. yeah. Um, yeah, it was um, <laughs> it was fun. I I had really, um, I mean, I train all the time, but I had really been wanting to be in like a dedicated fight camp for some time, and um, you know, I had been talking shit to some of our younger guys about staying in shape and staying fight ready and not getting <laughs> out of shape in between camps. And uh, I got asked to take the fight, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'm always ready. And um, yeah, it was a trip. It was really fun. Um, as weird as that is, dude, I thought I was going to be nervous. I wasn't nervous at all. I was wow. smiley as shit. I was, like, <laughs> so stoked to be there. And, um, yeah, it was awesome. It, um, yeah, I don't want to say anything too weird, but I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Submission, yeah. KO, what was it? Yeah, can we see? Um, I, I, so I really liked the kid that I fought. Um, like, I really like him, and I, like, had posted one video of me dropping him, and I saw in my stories that he saw it, and I was like, oh, man, I'm not, I don't want to post all these videos. Like, I felt <laughs> yeah, really bad. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah, luck, dude. He, he was Respect. A, he yeah. was a tough kid. And yeah, I, yeah. So, no, I won't share any videos, but, yeah, it went really well. Um, it was a unanimous decision with four knockdowns. So Nice, bro. Congrats. Kid was tough as nails, but. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, Back to just some of your music and your, your creative writing part. Um, I'd love to hear your approach to songwriting because obviously you're a guy that doesn't have, you know, 
doesn't want to feel the restriction on genre boundaries and things like that. So what's your mentality and your approach to songwriting and kind of writing projects now? Um, I always say God is too big for one religion. Music's too big for one genre. I just have no interest. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. I might put out a fucking hip-hop EP. I have no idea. <laughs> like, um, you know, for me, it... it the good songs happen really fast. I'm like fiddling on the guitar and then I'm like, boom, that's the vibe. And yeah. then it just happens right. really fast. If I start thinking too much, I scrap the whole yeah. thing and I'll come back later. Yeah. So for me, like all of the songs that we've ever put out were written in, you know, you five, feel 10 100% minutes. You yeah, about dude. that you're like, this is, this is the one just you know comes. right away. Yeah. 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 And I made a deal with like, when that creativity strikes that no matter what I'm doing, I'll stop and pick up the phone, you know, because I don't know how many of those you get in a lifetime, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Any, any questions from fans? Anybody want to ask a question? Ask Drew a question? Anybody out there? What's up? Ooh, Taking the first step and following your dream, you're going to die, dude. Memento Mori. <laughs> like, the thing that keeps me always going and following my heart and nothing else, at the end of this ride, man... God willing, I will be conscious and sitting or laying in a bed and thinking about how I live my life. And I don't want to be sitting there being like, man, I really didn't do it my way. I didn't mm. follow my heart. I did yeah, the well. logical thing. I did this. Like, for me, it's just send it, man. You will never regret sending it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Another question. In the, yeah, amazing. Amazing question. Amazing answer. Anybody else I saw? Yeah, we're down here. Mm. Yeah, um, I think about this a lot. For me, I've always been really drawn to activities where I say it's like walking the tightrope between this place and the other place, like here, physical, and the ethereal. So rock climbing, music, fighting, um, you know, those things. Um, I try to always remember that. You know, I've had a lot of uh, different experiences that I know that there's a lot going on in the ethereal. So whenever I feel really stuck in my humanness, I try to remember that this whole other spiritual world is also conspiring too. So yeah, that's really that. great. Probably one more question. What's up? Yeah. Ooh, five Ooh. albums deep. What's your favorite song from each <laughs> album? Big one. It's um, a good one to wrap up on for yeah. sure. The story of you. Uh, the title track from that record, it just like is the story of me figuring it out in Nepal and being like, yep, I'm on Team Send It from here on out. Um, and then what was after the story of you? Uh, pyramids. <laughs> pyramids. Um, beautiful Days um, on Pyramids. I, um, that song was written. I had just went back to my hometown for the first time in many years and saw a bunch of old homies that were just not... Doing the same, you know, they were doing the same old shit and people in and out of jail. And um, it was really affirming to me that I was on the right path mm. and that all of it was beautiful. Um, culture, I think Will Stand. Um, I love Culture. It's my favorite album we've ever made. Um, but Will Stand, God, when I wrote that, it felt so good to say all of the words in that song. Wow. Uh, it was such a, just a crazy time. It felt really good to spit those verses. Um, and then, all right now, um, I'm gonna, I think the title track from that one too, is again, just the, the affirmation that like all of this crazy, ethereal, physical shit's happening and it's always okay. Like if it wasn't okay, it would be the end. <laughs> yeah. And it keeps going. Um, and then uh, Flowers from the Fray, the record we just put out, I think Alone With You. It's the best love song I've ever written. And it just oh, yeah. uh, has proven to be time and time again, you know, the, the bond that I have with my wife is like, fuck, man. We've just been through everything and we keep getting through it. So Yeah, it's amazing, Drew. Yeah. Uh, what's up next? What do you do? I know you're on tour right now, but you're working on some new music or a new project or kind of new direction in mind? Kind of. I'm torn between doing a solo acoustic album. Um, I've always wanted to do one. Be cool. Yeah. 
um, I'm torn between that and, and maybe I'll do that and a full band record, but I also really, really want to get all of my guys in the studio with no plan and just be like, let's Sick. go and see what <laughs> cool. happens, you know? Yeah. Well, we were super excited to hear what you got coming down the pipeline and, and it's great to meet you, man. Yeah, it's my likewise, first time bro. meeting you, dude. Thank you so much for coming and just absolutely crushing it today. We love you here at Sugar Shack. And, for real. Uh, likewise. Love it's you awesome, guys man. Too. Thanks for closing out the festival with us. Can we give it up one more time for Drew and Satsang? Come on. Well, that's the wrap on this episode of the Sugar Shack Podcast here in Reggae Rise Up in St. Pete. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hey, thank you for sticking around. We love you all so much. We'll be back, I'm sure, next year. And that's a wrap on this episode of the Sugar Shack Podcast. Give us a follow on Instagram, social media, subscribe. Let's go. Let's go. Sugar, 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 sugar,